But there's something that's still troubling me. Perhaps it wasn't the acupuncture itself that was making the difference to people like Linda and the other volunteers. It could have been some other part of the treatment. Just being listened to once a week, having that kind of attention, or being able to lie down and relax properly, maybe those things made a difference. And there's another big problem. And then you stimulate yeah, them manually? Yeah, yes. The placebo effect. If you know you're having a treatment, and believe it might help, especially if it's something as elaborate as acupuncture, then that in itself can have a big effect. Yeah. And uh, another stimulation is... Uh, Maybe we want to... We want to Placebos can move mountains in clinical medicine. In order to create progress in healthcare, we actually want to find out whether a treatment is more than a placebo. It's a crucial hurdle to overcome. There's only one way to be sure that it's the act of needling itself that benefits the patient. And that's to compare those who've had acupuncture with those who've been tricked into believing they've also had it. Now, how on earth can you do that? Persuade someone they've had a one-inch needle stuck into them when they haven't? Well, something's been developed that does just that. I've come to see Mike Cummings, a medical doctor, as well as one of the country's most prominent acupuncturists. Well, in order for me to demonstrate those... He's keen to put acupuncture to on a real scientific footing and has been checking out techniques for fake acupuncture. So, well, generally, this is the experience that you'll have. Mm -hmm. Tap the needle in. Ow. And then gently, gently insert... Okay, I felt the spike, which hurt a bit. And when, it, when, when you pushed in and I didn't feel much, I just felt the spike, really. Okay, so that's the okay. real thing. So that's the real thing. So now I have to try and convince you, somehow, that I've done that type of procedure. This looks exactly like the needle I just put in your hand. Yet this one, rather like a stage dagger, actually disappears into the shaft of the needle. So when you insert it, Looks for all the world like it's gone in, but it's actually blunt and it hasn't penetrated your skin at all. Okay, we'll try it out. Pop that in there. And then we can tap it in the same way. That's convincing. And then we twiddle and push. It, to be honest, that is more convincing than the actual real acupuncture. That feels more like a needle going in and looks more like a needle going in. That's probably because the blunt end on the skin is still feeling quite sharp. I would believe I'd had acupuncture. Do you think it's in you? Um, I don't, because you showed me how it worked, but um, I, I would have done. Well, that was pretty convincing. And for me, it represents quite a big step forward. Because if you're able to have a believable sham acupuncture, it means you can put real acupuncture to the test properly and see whether it's the needling itself that's really having an effect. And what's more, I know of a team who've managed to do exactly that. I've come to the United States because a full-scale trial here has, for the first time, tested real acupuncture against sham acupuncture. At the University of Maryland, researchers were determined to discover whether acupuncture was better than a placebo. Leading the team was Dr. Brian Berman. When you're looking for a placebo in an acupuncture trial, you need to persuade somebody they've had a needle stuck into them mm -hmm. when they haven't. How do you do that? What we did was we took a guide tube, but there wasn't an acupuncture needle, and then we would tap it like that. And then we would actually tape over the point. We'd have them ready made up. And it would look pretty much the same thing so if you were looking down. Just the same. You said that you do this on naive patients. The people that we did it on had never had acupuncture before. Have, have you had acupuncture? I have. So you would be more able to tell the subtle differences between them. 
So, Maryland became home to the first placebo-controlled trial into acupuncture. As subjects, Dr. Berman used patients suffering from a crippling disease called osteoarthritis. There's no cure, only techniques for easing the suffering. Sylvia Ankers emigrated to America 40 years ago and has been in crippling pain for the last 20. You think you can do a lot. You know, you start to walk and you think, I'm going to be fine. I can walk this long road. But then the pain, it's, it's hard to explain. It's almost like having toothache in your knees. It just really hurts. But acupuncturists claim great success for it. For Dr. Berman, it was the ideal condition to test. 570 sufferers were recruited and divided into different groups. They were randomized to one of three groups. They either got true acupuncture, sham acupuncture, or the education control group, which was the standard care from the Arthritis Foundation. Sylvia, although she didn't know it, was assigned to the real acupuncture group. They told us that, you know, we wouldn't know whether we were having the actual acupuncture or a placebo. On my first session, I was a little apprehensive because, you know, you think needles going in, they're going to hurt, but they didn't. Throughout the 26-week trial period, the team checked the effectiveness of the placebo. We think the placebo worked reasonably well. Most of the people in the groups couldn't tell if they were receiving true acupuncture or sham acupuncture. The team were happy that they convinced enough of the sham group by the technique for the trial to be scientifically sound. Over the months, the results were compiled and then analyzed, and a clear picture began to emerge. The reaction was pretty incredible. There was a lot of interest because it was a well-done study with a large number of participants that had a credible placebo control and adequate follow-up and adequate acupuncture. So it was applying good science to this ancient technique. The results were to cause a sensation. When you compared the two, there was about a 33% improvement of the real acupuncture group over the sham acupuncture. And do you know whether the acupuncture is having an effect on the osteoarthritis itself? We don't think that the acupuncture is actually having an effect on the osteoarthritis itself. What we think the acupuncture does is it reduces the pain and inflammation. And that has the effect of then less pain, easier to get around and better physical function. So would you say that this trial proves that acupuncture works at least for osteoarthritis? I think it, it does show that acupuncture um, works for osteoarthritis of the knees. Um, you know, I can't say because of this trial that acupuncture works for other types of osteoarthritis even. Um, it may well do, but we need to do the sort of definitive studies. We don't have all the answers in Western medicine. So this trial is the first really convincing scientific evidence that acupuncture works. For Sylvia, it meant a new lease of life. I told everybody to use acupuncture. I felt like the spokesperson for them. There was such a difference in the pain level, in the walking, in every aspect of my life was changed. It felt like I had new knees again, because it was just, it was wonderful. When I heard about the Berman trial, first thing I did was send an email to Brian Berman to congratulate him because up to that point you know, we had the largest trial and now he had the largest trial and I think it's very important to get these big trials done. Uh, of course the nice thing about his trial is that it also had a placebo control group and he did show important differences between patients who received true acupuncture and those who received a, a sham technique. The Berman trial shows that acupuncture is effective for one specific indication. The trial is well designed and therefore I personally trust 
um, its results. It, it convinced me that acupuncture works for knee osteoarthritis. So scientists and patients seem to be speaking with one voice, that for osteoarthritis at least, acupuncture works. And other trials suggest it works for other kinds of pain too. So we can safely say, based on the evidence, acupuncture works for some kinds of pain. I'm quite surprised. I found evidence that acupuncture can work. Something I hadn't expected when I started this investigation. But that just raises an even bigger mystery. Because so far, there's no proof that needling has any measurable biological effect on the body. So how can it be treating pain? To be really convinced that it's working, I need to understand how it can be having its effect. A friend of mine, Mark Lithgow, might be able to help. As a neuroscientist, he's been trying to understand just what pain is. Pain research is a very new area. Just understanding the areas, how they connect together, is really just emerging. But modern scientific equipment, like the MRI scanner, has provided insights. Fifteen years ago, it was not possible to look inside someone's head. It was treated as a black box. This has revolutionised how we understand neuroscience today. Mm. Now we can actually see how the brain responds to pain. There's completely different areas that are associated with pain. You'd register that pain, and these parts of the brain towards the front would start mm -hmm. to light up. And there's another area at the sides, just here, called the insular cortex, which would also light up in order to, for you to register that feeling of pain. So the brain may be the key to acupuncture. That was really important. If acupuncture works on pain, then it ought to affect the areas of the brain that are involved in experiencing pain. And we're going to devise an experiment to try to measure that. Now, it's hugely ambitious, because of course we've got to be scientific and rigorous and plan it really carefully. But if it does work, we could find powerful evidence that acupuncture is having a real effect on the body. I've called in some of the top people in the field to help. So we're going to devise an experiment together that's trying to work out the effect of needling on the brain. I think one of the first key things we have to tackle is what we use as a control. I'm still a bit concerned to, to actually try and work out what acupuncture actually is. Is it the needle going in or is it actually the turning of the needle? And there seems to be a depth issue here as well. Most acupuncturists would say for this point here on the hand would needle about maybe half a centimetre to a centimetre. This is clearly much more complicated than it initially seems, isn't it? I mean, there are so many different parts we could look at. The position that you put the needle, the depth that you put the needle, the movement of the needle, whether you move it or not. So what you're suggesting is we just focus on the act of needling and take a... It's really interesting for me being in a room with a group of people of different perspectives. So scientists, some of whom are really sceptical about acupuncture, and acupuncturists who are interested in science but really believe in acupuncture. And I think to do a proper experiment in this field, you have to have those different perspectives. You need the scepticism, but you also need people who really understand the whole of the field. So let's just constrain ourselves to one particular point in acupuncture, say in the back of the hand. Mm -hmm. So How that, would, that, would that help us? Well, I think that would, because at least you're looking at the effect of, of, of that point on the brain, 
And one of the interesting comparisons then is to see if you just go, say, superficially, just under the surface of the skin, and see what happens to the brain, and then needle to the depth of maybe about a centimetre, which is probably on average what most acupuncturists would do. Mm -hmm. And we could, we could map that in the brain, we could look at that difference.